Hi friends, in today's video I'll be showing you my method of how I curate an isometric room in Magic of Voxel. I will give you all the tips and tricks that I use to help speed up the process as well as giving you some design tips. Hopefully by the end of the video you too will have something like the one I've got. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm using Magic of Voxel version 0.99.6.2 and without further ado let's get straight into it. So the first thing you can see me do is set the canvas size to 126 in every dimension. I like working on this scale because you can pack a lot of details into the creation. I also start by using palette 3 and deleting the default cube. After that you can see me using the face brush so I can quickly create my walls and floor. Right away you can see me getting started on the design process trying to figure out where I want things to go. While I'm making the stairs you can see me again taking advantage of the face brush so I don't have to place each voxel individually. Now that I have my stairs all set, you can see me using the box select and rotate tools so that I can efficiently copy and paste a duplicate set of stairs that lead farther up. I also have the camera set to orthographic view instead of perspective because I feel that it gives me a better look at to where the objects are going exactly. This also helps me both align and trim off any excess voxels so that the stairs fit seamlessly. Once I have the stairs looking the way that I want, I begin working on the rest of the room. A crucial part of creating a room that looks good is to keep playing around with different ideas until you find one that fits the atmosphere you want to project. Right here you can see me start to create the underbelly of the stairs so that the walkway doesn't look flimsy. After everything looks the way that I want, you can see me start playing around with the doorway at the top of the stairs. My first thought was to have light coming through the doorway, but it ended up being too bright, so I decided to scrap it altogether. You can also see how I start with an indent in the wall and then add a border around it to give the whole thing a window type feel. I didn't really like how close the window was to the outside edge, so I ended up changing the dimensions and moving it around closer to the doorway. After I measured out the dimensions, you can see me using a completely different method than before. Instead of making the indent first, this time I drew a big rectangle that is one voxel thick on top of where I want the window to go. Then after I like how it looks, I go back in and make the indent. Also make sure you put the border one voxel out from the glass so that it gives the window some sort of depth. So right here you can see that I place a temporary voxel at the bottom left corner of the two windows so that I can use the box select tool and easily move both of them at the same time. Now that I have the first set of windows in the correct spot, I move on to the crown molding. I think that every creation should have some sort of depth included in it, and in this case, I chose to put crown molding at the top to give it some flair. After I do the crown molding, I move on to the sides. You can see me working away some of the side walls to give it even more depth and to further the contrast. Right here you can see me run into my first problem. When I began making this room, I roughly sized out the walls but never made them exact. So when I tried to add pillars, they weren't the same size. It's never a bad thing to get the general shape of what you're trying to achieve, however, don't forget to go back later and refine what you've roughed out. Right there, you see me remove a section of the wall to give me more accessibility to where I'm working. If there's a lot of detail on the wall that you can't replace easily, make the canvas bigger and use the box select tool to move it out while you're working. This really helps speed up the process.
After I have the shelves set up, I start making my lights. In this case, I went with the lighter blue to give the atmosphere a soft yet modern feeling. Another thing to think about is the camera placement. There are plenty of opportunities to fit in secret ambient lighting simply because the camera is at a too high of an angle to see where the light is coming from. From here I decided to play around with the environment to get that crisp lighting you see in the final render. I also decide that the color of the room is too dark, so I try out different ones until I find a color that works. From here I take the advantage of both the box select and rotate tools so I can efficiently duplicate the smaller window and move it to the other wall. After that I duplicate it a couple more times to create a panel of windows shining light down into the room. At this point, I start to realize that the light is coming from the upstairs door is too bright and oversaturates the room, so I decide to get rid of it. One of the last things that I do is create a guardrail on the stairs, this time I make it on a much smaller scale. This was very, very tedious, however I think it paid off. Watch what I do here carefully. I start off by copying and pasting the main points on the guardrail on each step, then fill in the rest. Once again, I'm simply copying and pasting the tops of the guardrails so that I don't have to place each voxel individually. Now that I have the guardrail finished, I fill the wall back in and touch up anything I see fit. Finally, I add a door below the stairs to get in some of that extra ambient lighting. And just like that, the room is done for now. Hopefully this video helped you and gave you some insight on how I make isometric rooms in Magic of Voxel. If you want to support me and the things I make, go follow me on Instagram. I post all my creations on there as well as Instagram exclusive content. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.